Good morning, everyone. Good, after, uh, good morning. And welcome to this hearing of the City Council Transportation Committee. Annie Danis Rodriguez, the chair of this committee. First, let me recognize my colleagues who are here with us today. Councilmember Cabrera, Cohen, Dodge, uh, Ku, Menchaca, Miller, and Reynoso. We had to save lives. We need to address the epidemic that is affecting our city of so many pedestrians and cyclists losing their life. Nosotros tenemos que salvar vida de los peatones y de los ciclistas y erradicar una epidemia que afecta esta ciudad con la gran cantidad de personas que mueren en las calles. Y para lograrse eso, todos tenemos que contribuir, los choferes, los peatones y los ciclistas, a hacer de Nueva York una ciudad segura para todos. Today we will be voting on proposed intro 971-A, a local law to amend the administrative code of the city of New York in relation to a creating a dangerous vehicles abutment program. The bill is sponsored by Councilmember Brad Lander and I'm proud to be a co-sponsor too. Proposed intro 971-A, the reckless driving initiative would create a dangerous vehicle abutment program that requires owners of vehicles with more than five red light camera violations or with more than 15 speed camera violations within a 12 month period to take a safe vehicle operation course offered by the Department of Transportation. The proposed bill would also allow for the vehicle to be impounded if an owner fails to complete the safe vehicle operation course. Last month, this committee held a oversight, an oversight hearing titled Improving Street and Vehicle Safety. We held that hearing because over the last several months, there were too many vehicle crashes that killed numerous pedestrians, especially involving trucks. Last year, we saw an increase in cyclist fatalities within the last couple of years reaching almost 30. Enough is enough. We must begin implanting life-saving measures to ensure all pedestrians and cyclists are protected on the road. We need to be proactive in our approach to make roads safer and drivers should be accountable. We need to do everything in our power to increase safety for all New Yorkers and get reckless drivers off our streets. This bill helps us to do, do that by adding additional enforcement and an opportunity to educate the driver on the proper road safety Simply paying a $50 ticket is not enough. I will now call on Councilmember Lander to give a, a comment on his proposed bill. Councilmember Lander. Thank you very much, Chair Rodriguez, and I really want to thank you for your leadership of this committee, which has been uh, so critical in moving the city forward more broadly toward that Vision Zero, that day when we will not have anyone killed in preventable crashes. So uh, big thanks to you and to everyone on this committee and the council and the speaker for that. We've done a lot of work to try to address the carnage that we too often see on our streets. We've worked through engineering and physical changes to make our streets and intersections safer so drivers slow down, so people have safe crossings. We've done a lot of education work. We've done meaningful uh, enforcement through the expansion of the camera program. Uh, and most drivers, if they get one speed camera violation or one red light camera violation, don't like it and they slow down and they're more careful. But we all see out there those crazy reckless drivers. You just see them sometimes when you're driving around, someone that blows by you at a crazy high speed or runs a red light or whips an illegal U-turn and you think to yourself, that guy's gonna kill someone. Um, and it really is a driver like that that started the road to this bill. Right about two years ago, um, a driver uh, blew through a red light right outside my district office at Fifth Avenue and 9th Street in Park Slope. 
and killed uh, four-year-old Abigail Blumenstein and one-year-old Joshua Liu and hit the, uh, Joshua's, uh, Abigail's mom and she lost a baby that she was carrying. And that was, like, really just broke the heart of the neighborhood, as it so often does when these crashes happen. And what we learned quickly thereafter was that the driver who killed them had a history of speed camera and red light violations. And we could have identified this driver as a reckless driver from the camera violations and taken steps to intervene before she killed Abigail and Joshua. But that's not something that we or any other city is yet doing, focusing on the most reckless drivers based on this camera data that we have and intervening with them before harm causing crashes. It's common sense that the most reckless drivers are more likely to cause harm through crashes, but because the camera programs are new, we haven't yet set something up like this. So over the last two years, we've worked with a wide range of people to try to design a really good program that whole, identifies those most reckless drivers, holds them accountable, and takes an approach that's likely to get them to change their behavior, or if not, to impound their vehicle. Um, and that is this Reckless Driving Accountability Act, which I'm so grateful and proud that we're moving forward to passing committee today. Um, it has been, there have been some real challenges. You know, the Fourth Amendment uh, provides rightly protection against, uh, you know, unreasonable search and seizure of people's property. So we wanted to set up a program that provides all appropriate protections to make sure that we're honoring people's uh, constitutional rights. Um, there, the speed camera program has been dramatically expanding. We're going from 140 cameras to 750 cameras. So what the right threshold is as the camera violations has increasing is a big issue. And we want to take a restorative justice approach that attends to repairing harm and changing people's behavior. And so we're basing the course off a program that the Center for Court Innovation has been running at the Red Hook Community Justice Center. Um, that has had something like a 40% reduction in recidivism. And really, when you listen to people who have taken the course, because there are small classes and they hear from people who have lost loved ones to traffic crashes, start to make the connections that they've been missing between their own reckless driving behavior and the chance that someone else could be injured or killed. And we want to set the program up in a way that holds people accountable. And that's why having the sheriff tow vehicles who uh, do not participate in the program, even after they're identified as reckless, is important, but also offers a real opportunity for people to take a course that can change their behavior and get people to stop using their vehicles like weapons aimed at their neighbors. Um, and that's the program we're bringing to you today, and I, I really feel uh, uh, proud of it. I'll address two concerns I know that I've heard a couple of my colleagues uh, speak to. One is the somewhat lower number of vehicles that will be covered by this program. Uh, when we introduced it uh, a year and a half ago, we estimated that as introduced it would have covered about 20,000 vehicles, and we're starting with covering the 5,000 most reckless, so 15 speed camera violations or five red light camera violations. Um, and I sure understand the desire to have it be a higher number. You know, when you see a reckless driver kill or injure someone, you think, let's just take all their cars away. But we got to run a program that shows it works. And we believe that 5,000 per year is a program that can be implemented by the Department of Transportation in a strong way with those small classes that really get people to change their behavior and where people don't participate for the sheriff to uh, boot or tow their vehicles. Um, there's also, and then yeah, I've been asked why it's a three-year pilot program instead of a program that would just start and not, uh, you know, and keep going. And this is something new and groundbreaking. There is not yet really good data connecting the most reckless drivers to harm-causing crashes or good data on what enforcement or education approach will change their behavior and keep people safer. So this is being set up as a three-year pilot program. One bit of good news is that doesn't mean it needs to go through a big open RFP process that would take as much as a year and a half or two years to get started. 
Um, and it also means we can do a really rigorous evaluation. Uh, and so the bill provides for a very thorough evaluation of the program and its impacts. And that evaluation will be ready with data on the first year's uh, cohort in the program, with one year after that to see how their driving has changed. Um, uh, and then that, that evaluation will be ready at least three months before the program expires so that the next council can have all that information. And I believe when it proves that the program works and provides even more data and evidence, it'll make sense to expand the program back to where we originally proposed it or even beyond, but also to evolve as we learn more from the data and information that we're getting. One last final point, um, this bill covers the vehicles. The cameras, the red light cameras and the speed cameras, what they capture is a license plate. We don't know for sure uh, who is driving the car at the time that it is, is captured. We know who owns that vehicle, and that vehicle is being operated in a way that puts the lives of New Yorkers at risk. It is becoming um, a nuisance, what we're calling here a, a dangerous vehicle, and that is the harm that we are seeking to abate. Um, we will require the owner of that vehicle to take the course to make sure that it is being operated more safely, but there is an opportunity for them to go to oath and say someone else is the main operator of the vehicle and for the oath judge to have that person assigned to take the course. Um, it's easy to slip into language of the most reckless drivers who are obviously the ones driving these vehicles when they, when they speed and blow red lights, but the, the, the program we're operating here, this dangerous vehicle abatement program uh, is centered around a focus on those vehicles and the fact that they've become, as a result of the reckless way they're owned, um, a real danger to New Yorkers. So that's the bill. Um, I, it, I really want to, a lot of people have put their hearts and souls into getting it here, and so I'm going to thank uh, a bunch of them. I'll try to do it quickly, but I, I really appreciate your indulgence. Um, the speaker has been a champion and a supporter of this bill, and Mr. Chair, you have as well, so thank you. Um, council staff who drafted and worked with us on this bill have been hard at work, so to uh, Kelly Taylor, Elliot Lynn, James DiGiovanni, and Jeff Baker, a uh, big thank you. Um, Sometimes things can get, you know, in this case, we worked very closely with the law department to try to make sure everything is, is, uh, is really thoughtful. So I want to thank Andrea Berger, Mark Muschenheim, Olivia Goodman, Trevor Lippman, and Emily Steidelman at DOT, Commissioner Trottenberg, and Ben Smith. Uh, DOT is going to have a lot of work to do to set this program up, so their work on this is just beginning. Uh, Paul Ochoa and Anna Picior uh, at City Hall, and in my office, Julia Ehrman, who is here, uh, who really has been done yeoman's work on this bill, and, and it got started when Annie Levers was my policy director, so thanks to her as well. And then, as all of this work, advocates have just done an enormous amount of work. So to Families for Safe Streets, and especially Amy Cohen, Transportation Alternatives, and especially Mark O'Connor, to Steve Vaccaro and Blythe Danner, uh, Aaron Napperstek and Eric McClure, uh, a whole set of folks who figured out the data behind this, especially Brian Howell, and I encourage people to follow his How's My Driving bot on Twitter. Uh, and I mentioned that program at the Center for Court Innovation, the, run by the Center for Court Innovation at the Red Oak Community Justice Center, and want to thank Adam Mansky and Amanda Berman for setting it up and bringing the research into this program. So uh, thank you for the indulgence of this long uh, statement to the chair and to the committee. I really appreciate your support and think Look, that vision of Vision Zero, where no one is injured or killed in a preventable crash, is a North Star we're aiming toward. This bill by itself, obviously, is not going to get us there, but I believe we're breaking new ground in a way that will have real measurable impacts at holding reckless drivers accountable and at changing behavior and at saving lives and preventing injuries for New Yorkers. And I uh, really appreciate the support of my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Lander, for your leadership on this bill and many other initiatives that we've been working together. And I also would like to recognize that we've been joined by Councilmember Levine. And now I call for the vote on proposed intro 971-A. I recommend a yes vote. And I ask the committee clerk to please call the roll. Matthew DiStefano, Committee Clerk, Committee on Transportation. Roll call vote on proposed intro number 971A. Chair Rodriguez. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Deutsch. Aye. Kuh. Aye. Levin. Le 
Levine. With enormous congratulations to Councilmember Lander and the incredible coalition of advocates behind this movement, I proudly vote aye. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote? Grant. Thank you. Uh, I also want to thank the advocates. This has been a long time coming, uh, and Councilmember Bradler has uh, been really championing this work, and we in some ways never thought that this would come, and here we are. Um, as a member of the Transportation Committee and someone who represents a district that has uh, experienced immense violence on the roads with reckless drivers, I want to say a few things before I cast my vote. I think part of this work uh, as legislators is to really ensure that everything that can be done could be done. And the two questions that Councilmember Lander answered were, or kind of spoke to were my questions as well. The 20,000 to 5,000 decrease uh, is concerning. The pilot project is also concerning. I think that pilots are one of the things that the administration, and this is an administration, the mayor's team that I've been fighting for a while now, uh, uses as a, a opportunity to kind of slow things down. And there's no doubt that this work is a step forward. My question is that we still have maybe some time to push. And so I'm calling on any advocates to reach out to me uh, to, to, to kind of explain a little bit more about how we can maybe push this even further before we get onto the floor of the city council. The pilot piece is really, uh, I think, uh, a, a, um, a way to kind of slow it down that might not be necessary. These are my questions, and so I have questions today on the floor of the city council as a member of this transportation committee. So I will be voting no on this bill and hope that by the time we get onto the floor, uh, I can understand this better. Uh, I can feel connected to this work in a way that gets me to yes. I think I can get there, um, but I just want to make sure that I can voice this concern that I saw on Twitter. And, uh, and I know that there's been a lot of responses to this, which is good, um, but we're not done yet. And I look forward to working with everybody. Thank you. Miller. Permission to explain? Permission so um, I absolutely concur that with the intent of the legislation, certainly uh, ultimately is to change the cultures where we have to get to. All of our communities want to be safe. We want to keep our, our, our residents of New York City, whether they are residents or visiting, we want everyone to be safe while on the road. Um, and then secondly, education is how we get to change that. Um, but I do have some real concerns uh, about um, the ambiguity of this uh, bill that there are some open-ended, particularly cameras. I'm, I am a little concerned with the addition of, of, of the addition of cameras, considering what I have seen in, in my district and other places and, and placement and the lack of res, um, response from agencies as to when and how they got there and why they were placed in certain places, um, as well as whether or not we uh, can work collaboratively with agencies uh, to respond in, in, in a really transparent way that we have yet to see. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that all those questions can be answered in the very near future. Again, I absolutely uh, agree with the intent, but for now, I'll be abstaining. Okay. Councilmember, what is your vote? Councilmember Miller? You abstain? Thank you. Reynoso. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Um, first, I just want to start by thanking Councilmember Brad Lander. Uh, when I got into this council, I was endorsed by an organization called Streets Pack that was new to the game when it came to um, the type of council members that they want to put into office. And I was tasked with making sure that I looked out for the interests of pedestrians and cyclists and alternative transportation users outside of vehicles. Um, and it's because of the work that these transportation advocates like Transportation Alternatives and Families for Safe Streets have done over the last um, decade that really uh, put council, council members like Brad, like me, like 
Councilmember Menchaca in the council. And we were tasked to do a lot of work. Um, and this bill is a reflection of that advocacy um, working. But, uh, so I don't wanna take away from this moment, and I wanna thank the advocates and Brad. Uh, I just am very concerned about 5,000 of the worst actors in the city of New York are simply going to get an opportunity to uh, change behavior or fix behavior. This 5,000 of the worst people. I feel like 5,000 of the worst drivers just shouldn't be able to drive. And I don't think that that's a, a tall order. Millions of vehicles every single day in the city of New York. We're asking 5,000 people to learn how to drive again because they're reckless. I don't think that that's, that's a tall order to ask that they just lose their vehicles or their rights to, to conduct a vehicle because they're very dangerous and they're gonna kill, they can kill people on the streets and they are killing people on the streets. Thereafter, anything after that, 10, 20,000 of the next people should, we should have a restorative justice practice. We should be teaching people and educating them. But it just doesn't feel like a tall order to ask to make that happen. And my concern with this bill is that if this is what the administration is allowing us to move forward with on these type of conversations, then the advocacy and the work that I wanna to continue to do in the transportation sector is gonna be very hard for me to accomplish. If this is considered a monumental bill, then the stuff that I wanna get done is dead on arrival. It just really stops the movement that I'm gonna be able to move forward on with other pieces of legislation. And then for this to be a 36 month piece of legislation, why? I have, there's no logic. If there's 5,000 bad drivers, 15 speeding tickets mean the same today as they would in three years. Why put this as something that would go with sunset and would be done after 36 months? Let the next council vote against it if they want and if they don't think this is working. For us to just put a sunset is a big concern. Um, so I, I'm, just, I'm just very concerned about, about it, um, but I understand the realities that exist in negotiations with the administration and the difficulties that come about the work that we do. So I don't want to take away from the work that Brad Lander did to make this happen. So I'm going to vote yes. By a vote of seven in the affirmative, one in the negative, one abstention, the item has been adopted. We will leave the vote open for Councilmember Levin, who is around here. And before we leave, I would like to dedicate, you know, our vote to Family for Safe Street and Transportation Alternative. As I was speaking to one of the reporters in your one, Jennifer Martinez, you were referring to, you know, how all the media were covering the story when the little, when the mother lost her child on 116 and First Avenue back in, at the beginning of December. And for those of us who were there, sometimes we think that that's the last press conference that are gonna be covering or addressing the need to improve safety in the street. But suddenly, at the end of December, we had to go to Queens, where a mother crossing the 10 years old also lost her boy, plus four additional. So I think that, you know, I do agree with any concern that any colleague they can have, being sure that agencies do the job. But at the end of the day, we have to understand that we have 8.6 million people in the city of New York only 1.4 million individuals on vehicles. It means that 7.2 million New Yorkers walk in the street, rely on buses and train, and, and everyone has to do their part. But the ultimate responsible in the city of New York are drivers. So with that, thank you, uh, my colleague Lander, and um, Councilmember Levin is here. Councilmember Levin. Thank you, Chair, um, and with, um, uh, deep congratulations to my colleague Brad Lander on this very important legislation um, and uh, really keeping in mind the families that have lost loved ones uh, due to uh, vehicular violence. Um, I vote aye on all. Thanks. Okay, the vote now stands eight in the affirmative, one in the negative, one abstention to the end and before we leave we would like to send our prayer to the family of the police officers who were the victim of the assault and uh, yesterday we spoke very loud and clear and strong we condemn any assault against any member of the NYPD 
we rely on them to keep our, our cities safe. Uh, we always been working to improve the relationship between the police and the community. And the only way of how to do it is that continue uh, de developing the mechanism of respect by any level of assault on any police officer is taken and should be taken as an assault of the 8.6 million New Yorkers. Thank you. With that, this hearing is adjourned.